Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome <laughs> to Living Well. I am so happy that you're here this evening. And this afternoon, we have a very special program about fathers inside a father's heart. And so many of us have fathers and we may know things about them or not know things about them, but there will be two interviews that we'll be doing today with two fathers. And so I want to remind you that this presentation is for educational purposes only. And I do want to remind you that we do not assess, diagnose, treat, or anything like that. So if there's any questions or anything that you hear in the program today, I ask that you refer that to your personal physician. And so I want to welcome Larry Floyd, he is one of our um, presenters today and one of actually going to be interviewed and also Stephen Sankey. Welcome, Larry. Uh, good evening. How's everyone? Happy Sabbath. And welcome, Steve. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, great. We're so glad that you're here. So me and Emily this week, we were talking about our fathers and how much our fathers meant to us. And Emily, remember that conversation that you were telling me about your dad? Yes, I sure did. I was sharing today, um, this week with Dr. Sankey, you know, how my father was such a great influence in my life, in our lives, and the way he took care of us. You know, when I think about my father, I think about our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is an example of how our earthly father should be like. I think of my father as someone was a protector, like our heavenly father protected us. I saw many a times where my father um, protected his family, protected me, you know, provided for me a home, a place of safety, um, provided food on the table, no matter how much he had to sacrifice to do that, he made sure that his family was taken care of. He was a great provider. All of these things reminded, remi reminds me of my heavenly father also. So I am just so happy to know that I had a father who was, who took such great care of me. And because of that, I can relate to my heavenly father on in an intimate way, a way that I know how a father should relate to a daughter, to his children. Thank you so much, Emma. And I'll share about my father a little later, but I wanna start with asking Steve, and I have three questions that I want to ask you. So how long have you been a father? Um, I'm 36 years. 36 years. Wow, yeah. that's a long time. So what was your reaction when you heard that you were going to be a dad? Steve? I was, I don't know, I was, I guess it's more of a panic fear, like, okay, okay, so what do I do now? You know, I don't know kind of things. I don't know what am I supposed to do, you know, type thing, but. But at first, it's probably, I guess the first thing was like, kind of like a little disbelief type thing. You know, I really can't be a dad, can't really be, can't really have a baby, just so you sorry, right? But, um, uh, but obviously, you know, as the time goes on, you know, you, you see the baby, uh, the pregnancy coming along. And then, you know, we took those, um, what they call it, all those classes, I can't remember what they call those classes back in the day, it's just so long. But anyway, the cl birthing classes, birthing classes, you know, to see, you know, what's the process and all that kind of stuff. And I just had, so I, tried to, I just decided at that point, this, this is not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna make the best of it. That's what I said to myself. And, and, I, and, and uh, life, pretty true, it did not disappoint me. It wasn't easy, but I, I did make the best of it. <laughs> so tell me, what's been your greatest joy being a father though? Well, the greatest joy, nothing's greater than seeing your children accept the Lord in their life. I think that was my greatest, when I saw my daughters, get baptized. I think that that was, uh, and then one of them got rebaptized. So that, that was just a good thing to see that they just wanted a relationship with God. Uh, obviously, next to that was that they both completed their, their uh, master's degrees in education. That was a very uh, moment in my life. Nothing surpasses seeing your children accept the Lord in their life and, and, and trying to live a Christian life. Amen. So, you know, um, so you've been through all, on this journey for 36 years. So who was your role model though? I mean, how did you learn to become a father? 
Well, I looked at the men of the church, and there was, uh, you know, besides my father, but but I found out um, that the, I, I just had this thing about me. I want to gather as much information from as many men as I could mm -hmm. to, to formulate my idea of how, what, how, what parenting should be like or what a father should be like. And um, and um, one thing I found out from the, the men in the church is I would look and see which fathers were having the greatest success with their children. And um, and um, so one of the fathers I actually went to him and asked him, I asked him, I said, you know, you're doing so well. What, what's, your, what's your secret? I said, I need to know what the secret is. And um, he, he told me, he says, well, if you expect nothing, you get nothing out of your children. And so that was, a, you know, a great piece of advice um, um, that he that he gave me that you expect if you don't give have any expectations will not uh, <laughs> do what you would like for them to do. So I, I learned that that that's what I need to do have great expectations. And the other uh, thing I noticed that that the the, the the spiritual fathers who made tremendous sacrifices for their children as far as pertaining to Christian education. And I always thought that that was admirable because one thing I did learn from listening to them is that you would never regret any sacrifice that you make for your children. And so I, I, I had to live by that and go ahead and make the sacrifice. You might not like it, it might be painful, it might almost put you in the poorhouse, but but uh, you would never regret that sacrifice that you make for your children. So I tried to look at the, the men in the church as well as my own father and try to find the best, uh, I can't say that anybody was doing it one perfect, but I just tried to grab the best from each of these individuals that, uh, that I observed and spoke to. You brought up some really good points, Stephen, as it relates to, number one, um, talking to people who had, you saw success in their children or how they were behaving. Um, also looking at your own father. Also, the other thing you mentioned is, you know, your greatest joy being that your children, your, both of your daughters, were baptized and to and accept the Lord as your savior. So I think that, you know, that is one of the joys that uh, most parents would want because we know that this earth is so temporal, yeah. you know. Um, I was looking in the Bible and it, in Jeremiah 17, seven, it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. So as a father, your trust in God to lead, to guide, to help you be a father certainly has had some very positive benefits. And that is that your children that have now accepted the Lord as their, you know, as their Lord and Savior, accepted God as their Lord and Savior. So let me just talk to Larry just a little bit. Larry, let's just talk to you a little bit. How long have you been a father? Well, I've been a father 47 years. My son's oh, birthday was yesterday and my birthday was last Tuesday. So we're both Gemini, so we bet he is a little bit here and there, but the thing that I like the most is that he stays on course as far as being a provider and, and being a positive role model for his daughter. I want to I wanna start out with something that I have learned about myself that it, it would be devastating to some people to learn it at such an, such, such an elderly age, I'll say. And that, that the man that raised me that I call my father was not my actual father. My mother had me out of wedlock and he took me in and raised me with the rest of my brothers and sisters as his own. And his example was very inspirational to me and it, and it still carries it right to date because I, I see a lot of the qualities that he had and he make us go to church and he, you know, he, he do things that, that he, he was always providing. So he, he was, my, say my role model as far as life goes. Now I know what to do to give to my son for him to be a better father to his daughter. Well, so that sounds like you had a very good role model throughout your life. So 47 years is a long time. Do you remember the first time that you heard that you're going to be a dad? Ecstatic. Okay. Very ecstatic because, you know, I, 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 people think that, that men don't get excited behind children, but yes, we do. You know, they, they carry a special place in our hearts 
you know, and, and for it to be your own, that makes it even more special. Okay, great. So you were excited. So what has been your greatest joy as a father? Just to see him go, go through life and even though he had his bumps and bruises here and there, that he still is he's on a positive track now. He's doing everything that he's supposed to be doing. Now, my, my granddaughter is, is basically following in his footsteps doing because he's the example for her. And, and just like I, I talk to him a lot of times, I tell him, I say, if you don't do anything for anybody else, make sure your child is okay. You know, just like I, I try to make sure he's okay, I want him to make sure that she's okay. So to go, because she has a daughter. So I have a great granddaughter. So it, it's like, pay, pay it forward. Okay. Okay, I took care of you and did the things that, that were needed. I might not have been in everything that you, that you participated in, but I want you to start doing better than I did. Great, wow. So I'm going to go back to Steve. Steve, are there any are there any fathers in the Bible that led and guided you to your um, decisions that you made for your children? Yes, uh, well, there are two, but the, my main my main man I got to call him my main man is Noah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Noah. It got to got to got to be Noah. 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 First of all, the man had faith. He had faith because he asked him to do something that had never been done before, and there was no reason for him. To, Believe God because it had never rained before. But Noah, the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah walked with God. God, Noah did what the Lord asked him to do, even though it didn't make any sense. And and, and because God asked me to do a lot of stuff with my kids, it didn't make any sense. But but uh, uh, um, but that's, that was my that was my main example. And then Noah, uh, uh, you know, he preached for 120 years, trying to warn the whole world. But in the end, he made sure that the family was saved. All three of his sons and their wives were on that ark. No one else was on there, but he made sure that they got the message and that they were, were saved on the ark. And, uh, and so that, that, that's, that's my, 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 my number one character is Noah. I believe that I'm going to make sure that I, I do try to witness the people. I really do. But if they don't want to hit out, I, I want to make sure that my family is saved in God's kingdom. Nobody else, I can't see nobody else to make sure that they're in. The other one is Abraham. I just please to talk about Abraham. We kind of know his story. Is that Abraham, uh, the Bible says, Abraham commanded his household, his children after him, and that in the in the way of the Lord. And that's what I just wanted to do, lead my children in the in the way of the Lord. And because and we know that because we went to God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Isaac you know, being strong than his father, fast his father couldn't catch him if he tried because Abraham was 100 some years old. But Abraham allowed his father to play him on, on that altar because this is what God told him to do. And, and Isaac, Isaac trusted his father, but in ultimately, in the long run, Isaac learned to trust God for himself. And, 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 and that's what I would like to, in, within my daughters uh, because I've already said that. that we are a family. Every time I, every time we're into a family crisis, I would tell the children, "Remember, we are what they say—a family of faith." And so, and so Abraham is called the father of the faithful. Uh, and not only that, he trans—he he he is emphasized his faith. That not only did his faith carry down to his son Isaac, but also down to his grandson Jacob. You know, I love those examples, Noah. You're right. His family was the only one on that ark. Yeah, I mean, even though he had been preaching family. for 100 years, he made sure his family was on there, and they had to trust him because they had not seen rain before. They had not seen any of that that their father had been talking about. So I would say number one is we need to learn to that you know that when fathers are leading, Christian fathers are leading, that we need to follow. And then the other one is Abraham. Yeah, both of them, um, the children trusted their fathers. They did trust their fathers. And, you know, sometimes we don't always see that for whatever reason, but yet they live an upright life, right? So right. back to my verse, Jeremiah 17, 7, blessed is the man who trust in the Lord. So if you trust in the Lord or fathers trust in the Lord, their children in turn can trust in the Lord. And I like that, that you are a family of faith. And what that means is you may not see 
what God is doing, but because God said do it, you believe him enough right. to follow after him. Right. Thank you, Stephen. So I'm going to ask you the same question, Larry. Are there any um, Bible characters that you have modeled your fathering after? Well, I have to say, as, 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 as uh, Stephen just did, Abraham. Because if you think about it, for him to, to be willing to sacrifice his son as, as God had asked him to, that shows us the example of what God possibly was going through when he, when he had to give Jesus for us. You know, that ultimate sacrifice of, of just standing on his word, no matter, no matter what the consequences, no matter what the outcome, that you trust in him and believe in him. In him. And even when uh, Isaac asked him about the, about the sacrifice, he said, I see the wood, I see all these things. Where's the sacrifice? And he, he told him, says, God will provide a sacrifice. So Abraham already knew, and then he even trusted enough to know that even if he had to sacrifice his son, that God was able to resurrect his son, if, if, if so be. You know, so it, it's, it's to his, his level of faith was outstanding to me. Because if you ask me to do that, I, I'm not sure that I would be able to do that because that's my, that's my blood. That's, that's someone that I truly love. But then I have to go past human emotion, you know, because it's not about us as, as flesh and blood. It's where we dwell in the spirit. It's how we, how we perceive ourselves in, when it comes to our commitment to God. And, and if you do this, with your children and you a lot don't you, you can talk all day but if you live a life that is an exemplary before them they can't help but to see it you bring up a very good point as it says is you know being examples for your children because children i mean honestly they watch us they watch us like a lot of people say, I'm like my mom because I watched her. I'm like my dad because I watched him. I saw them do different things. So they're watching us. So Larry, the question I have for you is what legacy do you want to leave for your son? What's the one legacy that you would want your son to say, that was my dad and I'm like him because? What would that be? Just that he, he commits himself 100% to the Lord. I, I mean, I know I've been, over my life, I've been through hills and valleys all over the place and stuff, but I'm so glad that in my in my weakest moment or in my lowest point, God stepped in mm -hmm. and he showed me that I needed him more than I thought I did and that he knew me better than I knew myself. Mm -hmm. So I want my commitment to God to carry over into my son, my granddaughter, and my great-granddaughter because I want them to be able to, to Stand with the Lord when, when the time comes, and for Him to be able to say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." Now I want them. I want them to be saved because I just like I have. I'm working, trying, working, and believing on being saved. I want them to have that same faith. And that's a, that's a great legacy to leave. If you're able to convey to them or impart to them your faith in God, and that they can see that and live it. That is a great legacy to leave. I'm going to ask you the same question, Steve. Uh, well, you know, not to be redundant with the, the faith, but we, of course we want to have faith. But to be more practical, to be more practical, uh, something that, uh, like a legacy that I got from my parents, is that's for caring for people. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother and my father, I mean, I, they would just go out of their way to just try to help people. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and I've tried to go out of my way to try to help people. And I see see that being emulated in my daughters, where they will go out and, and really try to help people, make a difference, make a difference in mankind, make somebody's life better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sacrifice for people. My daughter you know, has helped people pay their bills and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to discourage it, but she's but that's okay. I mean, that's her. That's that. But she got that for me to, to, to try to help people, not to let anybody spur in front of your face if you have the ability to do something about it and try to help them. And so that's the case I want to, to, to always have. Don't always help wherever you can. 
and I, and always do the best job that you can. Like Daddy's so always say, a job worth doing is worth doing right. You know, do it, do it right. Do do a good job, and and have good work ethic. And those are some of the things besides Christian principles. The practical ones are, are that of working hard and doing the best you can and caring for other people. Yeah, those those are you know those are things that people need to know that they're cared for, that someone loves them and are, you know appreciates them. Because in this world that we live, many times. You know, people are not too eager to be paying somebody's bills and do different things, especially because your daughters are, daughters are um, in their thirties. So, you know, it's really a good legacy that you want to leave for them is helping other people. And then when you are working for others to do the very best job possible. Um, I remember that, um, and I'm gonna have one more question for both of y'all, but before I go to that, I wanna read from Psalms chapter one, and it says, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And I read that in honor of our father, my dad, that was his favorite verse, and he knew every single um, verse in that because he wanted to be that godly man who stood firm no matter really what other people were doing he wanted to, he knew that he represented god and so the last question for you steve and then i'll ask you the same question larry is um how has um the example of our heavenly father influenced your role as a father okay the thing about our uh, heavenly father is that there's nothing that God would not do for salvation of mankind. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there was, there was nothing that God, he spared nothing for the salvation of, of, man, of mankind. Uh, like, likewise, uh, there's not anything that I would not do for my kids, to, mm -hmm. my children to enhance uh, their, them on their spiritual journey. That is why we invested in Christian education. Uh, it, it, was, it, it was quite expensive all the way through college, through master's degrees. Uh, but I decided, I remember, I remember what I said earlier, what, what the old men taught me is that there's no, that there's no sacrifice that you would make for your children that you will regret. And so God, in spite of the fact it cost the life of his son, God never regretted nor did Jesus regret sacrificing his life uh, for, for mankind. So I'm very proud to say that both my children are products of Christian education. Uh, the other thing about God that I like is that God is patient. Mm -hmm. God is patient with us and he is not willing that any should perish. And that's the way I feel about my kids. I don't want to see, I would, I would not want to see my children lost. And, uh, and uh, the one thing I learned like, is, is, is to exemplify patience with children. You got to have patience. We, if you can't have patience, then you cannot be a good parent. If you cannot exemplify parent patience, because children will try your patience. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they really will. But you got to, you know, be patient with them and understand that they're on a journey and let allow them to grow up and mature, you know, regularly. So you probably see some characteristics in your children that you that you can relate to because you have those same characteristics. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. God, the thing about the example of God is that um, in my rule as a father, there was nothing that God would not do for us as his children. And, and I tried to remember the same uh, character of God, that there was nothing I would not do to try to make their lives better and to, and to um, and yeah. especially for salvation of their souls. Absolutely. So we can provide for children. We can protect them. We can do all of that with God's help. God, yeah. And God, God said, God. I supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. So whatever they needed, I try to be there to supply it for them. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Steve. And I'm going to ask Larry, I'm going to ask you the same question. And then we're going to open the, the mic for other testimonies about fathers. So my, Larry, the same question goes for you uh, regarding the, our Heavenly Father. 
Now I'm going to kind of piggyback off of off of what Stephen just said and saying and, and answering and saying to you that and in following this my Lord has taught me so much about very important components of my life. One is surrender, because without surrender, you cannot truly have a connection with Him. Then you have uh, sacrifice. Because there are things that you're going to have to do for your children, even though you may not feel like you, you are able to or you want to, but you still have to be willing to make that sacrifice. You know, and then the other one is commitment. Just as, as we are committed to our families, God is committed to us. He, he's going to be there for us as long as we trust him, count on him, and know that He's not a man where he'll lie. He's not going to lead you astray. He's not going to, to be a, a bad father, you know, like, as, as we may know bad fathers to be. But he, he is the greatest example of what we should be when it comes to our children. And, and, and not just, just our own personal children, nieces, nephews grandchildren, all of them, when they look at us, they're supposed to be able to see the Lord in us by our character because we are Your mic just went out. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. They won't see they won't see anything of a negative content when it comes to our being that role model for them. We just lost Larry. Cannot hear him. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I said my internet's acting up, so if we... That's okay, go continue on. Okay, we, we, we have to follow the example that God gave us, and that is to be kind, loving, uh, good-hearted, and if you want friends, you got to show yourself friendly. So everything that, that you want your children to know or to see, it needs to be of a good nature. It needs to be something that, that inspires them. You know, not with a lot of the stuff we see going on right now in the world because we know there are a lot of broken homes right now and stuff like that. But we as as the, the, the parents that are out here trying to do the best we can need to help even those children. You know, even trying to help them to do better. Because some of them a child, this is something that I learned. A child is always yearning for discipline. They want to know that you care. But if they don't, if they don't see that, and all they get is the stuff that the negative people are giving them, they're going to gravitate toward the negative. And you know, you're right, Larry, in that um, our heavy father sometimes disciplines us because of our behavior and things that we do. And sometimes we don't like it, but we know that we need it because we need he wants us to be saved he's trying to help us to live a righteous and a holy life and so you bring up a very good point that it may not be your biological son or daughter but there's many people that we need to make sure that when we see a young person whether there's a church or schools or in the community that we can be role models for we become that person's father because we never know. They may have lost their father at a young age. Maybe the father was never in their life. You gave a good example about you. You thought that was your biological father. So many times, I think as we talk about Father's Day, there's probably many people that we need to be thanking because they have been good role models. Steve mentioned mm -hmm. that there are older men that he talked to, that he looked at, and he saw. Those, in turn, were his extended fathers. We had an amazing father, but he certainly learned additional things from them. So what I, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Larry, for sharing your testimonies about fatherhood. What I'd like to do is I would love to talk about, we have about 10 minutes. If anybody would like to share some a memory about their father. Today, our program is called Inside a Father's Heart. 
and Larry and Stephen have actually told their story about inside their heart, how they gave to their children, how they invested in them, what they did for them, what they want to leave for them. Is there anyone they would like to also share maybe a memory about either your biological father, your heavenly father, any of that that would be um, that you enjoy sharing? Feel free to open your mic. Okay, when well, no one's opening the mic, I'm gonna. Oh, okay, Miss Ed, Miss Edwards, hello. Yes, I would like to. I, I let first of all, I enjoyed so far all I've heard, as I do every time I listen to your program. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're and I uh, <clears throat> appreciate what these fathers here today have um, said and how they have been there for their children and their families. And I would like to say that I too had a very loving father who loved all of us and he loved all the, the other children that he came in touch with in the church and in our neighborhood. But um, he was so much like Jesus Christ, I believe that he would have given his life for each one of us. And I thank the Lord for that. And he stood by us and he stood by my mother and he was the best father. And I thank the Lord for him. Wow, thank you for sharing that. How yeah. many children in your family? How many? How many? Well, I'm the oldest of seven and oh. my father and my mother were married they would have been married 75 years when they both died um, at 95 years old with, with, uh, within three years of each other, about five years ago. Wow. Yeah. Thank you they for had sharing a life. that. Yeah, they had a beautiful life together. Well, you know, and you and your sister, knowing the two of you, I can tell that they've left a rich rich legacy of friendliness, detail, hardworking, whatever your hand finds to do, you all find it and do it. And you do it with all your might. So I, I'm going to, you know, I can't tell your father, thank you, or your mother, thank you, but certainly they've left a rich legacy yeah. in both of you. Thank, thank you for you. sharing that. Thank Would you. anyone else like to share about their father or an uncle or someone who's been a father figure to them? Well, I, I second what um, Sister Bernice said about the program. I, I really enjoy every time I come on. And I wish that I could say that my father was um, a godly person, but he actually was um, a very good provider. He um, saw to all our needs. I didn't think at the time, I didn't like it at the time when he would not allow us to have friends, but we could not. Um, People could come to our house, I'm sorry, but we could not go to their house. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that. So, um, but he, my mother, on the other hand, she was a very godly person and she tried to help him to convert, but he just, it just um, wasn't enough. He just did it. But we do appreciate him anyhow, because he was a good provider. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, you know, and what we have to believe is all of us have characteristics of God. So even, you know, sometimes we, we, ex we expect them to, to go to church or do certain things to demonstrate that they are Christians, but we do know that there are people who do not go to church, but they have a relationship with God. And so just the fact that he provided, because there's some fathers who do not provide for their children. And as a result, they suffer, you know, the children, you know, their needs are not always met. Um, anyone else like to share about their father? Hello. Hi. I too thank um, Mr. Larry and Mr. Stephen for sharing. And I thank you, Dr. Sankey, for putting it together because so often, we hear the negative of fathers, you know, we don't hear, like when I, I do Sunday school, 
Um, the kids are always so enthused to say things about their, their mothers, but you have to be very careful when Father's Day come around because a lot of the, the, the fathers are missing from the homes for whatever reason. A lot of, there's a lot of incarceration and, you know, or they're just not in the home. So you have to skillfully get around to who's there and who's there and how we're going to handle Father's Day. So it's good for us to highlight, you know, um, the, the positive um, fathers that are out there because there are a lot of them and I thank God that my son um, who's 40 years old and I always thank God that he's a he's a good son and he's a good husband and he is a great father mm -hmm. you know I, and I, I really really thank God for that because I remember one time I mentioned to him oh you're gonna you're gonna babysit so he says my I don't babysit my, my children. I'm mm -hmm. their father. Mm -hmm. I'm their father. I get to be with my my children. You know, it's it's just what he loves to do. So um, it, it's a good thing for us to celebrate, you know, the fathers, the good fathers that are out there because there still are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. You know, and we need to tell our fathers more that we are appreciate them and say thank you. You know, because honestly, we don't, I know I didn't say, I wish my dad was still living because I tell him thank you more and more every day. I think about him and I think of something that he taught me or something. And I, I, I know I didn't say thank you enough. I did say thank you. But when I think about this, in fact, just the other day, I was cleaning out some stuff and I ran across a list that I had written for my dad and he was turning 77. So I was trying to write 77 things about my father. I got to 44, but, but now I could probably easily add to that list. But um, but really, fathers don't, all, mothers hear it a lot. You know, mom, I love you, but do you really say, dad, I love you? You know, and we hug moms, and but we think that men do not need hugs. We think they don't need thank yous. We don't think they need, we don't think they have a heart sometimes. We're like, they don't need to hear all that. They're not mushy. But I think saying thank you and appreciating them um, is really important. So when I was looking at these, I won't read all 77 of them, but I did write down here that our, our parents, um, my father put five children through um, Christian education, which costs. And I know he told me this story one time about he took, he took the, the first four, because I'm the youngest, took the first four to the office and said, I have a fifth child that I need to enroll. But at the school, you know how they have like a ledger, of, if you have one child, it's this much, if you have two, it's this much but their ledger only went up to four. It didn't go up to five and I'm the fifth one, right? So the principal will say, oh, just put her in, just put her in. <laughs> so part of my education was free because they didn't even have a, a, um, a one for the fifth one. But my dad was a printer, he owned his own printing business, his own janitorial business. Every day in our home, we had worship together. Um, in the morning, he left home at four in the morning, but he would get us up before he left the house to have worship with his family. He wanted to pray over his children. He took us to and from school. I mean, those are things that, that you know, someone would say, oh, they should do that, but not all children have that. Some children, they walk to school or they catch the bus, but my father would actually go to work early so that he could pick us up, take us to school and pick us up from school. Um, on Sundays, he would play softball with us. He, there were um, five children in the house. He bought five cars. So we didn't even have to share a car. We all had our own car. You know, and that's a sacrifice. And those are material things, but what he did do is all five of us were baptized as well. So he made sure that we were baptized and, and knew the Lord is, uh, you know, and a couple of years ago, I asked my sibling, it's been several years back, and I said, what time do you get up in the morning? And most of us still get up around four. You know, we wake up and then we always have devotion before we leave our homes. And so we've kept that legacy of my dad, but, um, to have a provider and a protector and especially a godly man. Um, I just think that, you know, if you have sons, I appreciate you mentioning your son. Where does she go? There she is. You know, your son being a good father, letting him know that how much you appreciate him being a good father, um, telling them how much you appreciate that um, because we just don't, we, I don't think we compliment one another. We just think, oh, that's what they're supposed to do. But not everyone does that. So Anyone else would like to share about their father? Yes, I'd like to. I'd like to stop long enough to thank God for for this man having been in my life, because from time to time we we, we butt heads here and there, but 
at the time that, that this happened, I didn't know what I know now. And that's that I had the opportunity to stand with my daddy and just pour my heart out to him and tell him, I know it hadn't been easy. I know you've been through a lot with all of us because it was eight of us and, and stuff. So four of us are still here. I still got three sisters here with me. But I had the opportunity to look this man in the face, give him a big hug and tell him, I'm sorry. Whatever I did, when we knocked, knocked in with each other, whatever, I'm sorry. I love you. I've always loved you. And I'm thankful that I got a chance to do that before, before he passed. That's a blessing. And those are, those, are, those are gifts from God that he gives us that we can tell our, and I, you know, my dad, he knew that I appreciated him and I spent time with him and all of us did. But it's, it is, those are the things that when you look at the sacrifices that our parents, mothers and fathers have made for us, most of them are great sacrifices. And, you know, the beauty of it is when, when you grow up and you begin to apply the knowledge and live the knowledge and really carry on their legacy. I mean, when I think about Ms. Bernice and I think about Ms. Turnbull, I mean, I know them closely and I know Emma, you know, when I think about when I see them, never met their parents before, but I see that their parents have instilled almost like that seed that they put in the ground, it grows deep roots. And then now it's, it's fruitful, it's multiplying, it's actually still multiplying. And those are the things that we want to do. So tomorrow, Father's Day, you reminisce on the good times, of what you've learned from your father, you know, maybe people didn't have a father in their life, but the mother stood in and did both roles, still a lot to be thankful for and grateful for, because our Heavenly Father has given us the example. He's given us the example, and, and sometimes people say, well, I don't have a dad. You know, I know people who lost their father early in life because they passed away from an accident or something happened, but our Heavenly Father is so consistent. He never leave us, never forsake us. He will supply all of our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. He will continue to do that, even though our fathers, some of our fathers have passed on. And so he continues to be our father, that consistency in our lives. Emily, anything else you'd like to add? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I just got to my house. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just appreciate Steve and Larry sharing the experience of being fathers. I know it's not an easy road, but we have Christ, we have God as our example, and that's the best example we can have to, ex <clears throat> to show what fatherhood should be like. Because I, I growing up, I had a wonderful father who sacrificed everything. I remember one time I needed something and I just didn't want to tell him about it because I know things were hard, money was hard to come by. And I did not say anything. And then my father found out that I, there was something I needed. And he was like, never do that again. If you need something, let me know. No matter what, I'll get it for you. You know, and that made a lasting impression on my life to know that my father cared so much about me that he was sacrificed to, to make sure that my needs are met. So fathers, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank mm -hmm. you for providing for your family. And we pray that as our families, our children, see um, the examples that you live, that they too would be um, fathers, or that your example will rub off on them and they one day will have families that they will continue with that legacy. So thanks again for everyone who took part in this program. Thank you so much. As you were talking, Emma, and I remember when I was thinking about getting married, I said, I want to marry someone like my dad, because I want somebody to provide for me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I want someone to take care of me, and, you know, and so I, I do com compliment you, Steve, for raising two wonderful girls that are very self-sufficient and independent right now, um, but I'm sure that they're going to have a hard time finding someone like you um, who has provided <laughs> for them, and he teaches them how to change the oil and check the oil, not change it, but check the oil and do all these things through their cars. Good grass. Sometimes, they cut the grass, so sometimes it makes it difficult. But I do want to recognize my brothers, um, my other brother Ivan, that's on as well, who's a father of two um, young young adults, actually. Um, um, Marquise is thirty four, and um, Tanil, who's thirty one. Thirty one, yeah. Thirty one. So 
I don't know, Ivan, if you wanted to say anything about fatherhood. We're going to be wrapping up, but I would love to give you an opportunity. I can't beat what they said. I was <laughs> impressed myself. Uh, but it, it is a, it is an honor, but it also is a challenge in fathering and, and keeping balance. Um, uh, so so I'm, I'm just thankful I was able to listen in and hear. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So we know that there's joys in fatherhood and there's some sorrow. Sometimes I'm sure our parents, they have broken hearts inside. They may not show it, but there may be decisions that we make that they probably would not make, you know, but they trust us and let us go with it. And I think the good thing about it is parents are still right there beside you to pick you up if things don't go as, as planned. So um, thank you all so very much for being on today. I'm going to, um, we're going to pause and do a prayer um, for our recording. Next week, we actually have, Emily, you want to share with us what we're going to talk about next week? Oh boy, next week. <laughs> next week, we're going to actually have a special guest. It's going to be Rosemary Drummond. She's going oh, to speak yeah, to yeah. us. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember all of my... <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I put you on the spot. Emily's over in St. Croix, for those of you who don't know. So she ran away from home. She'll be back later in, in, in July. But um, So she's going to have her calendar in front of her. But we do have Rosemary Drummond, who will be with us next week. Very excited about her topic. Um, she actually owns a an adult daycare, but she's going to talk about some of the topics that um, that affect elderly people. And then she'll also share some really good information. I had a chance to talk with her this week, and we're looking forward to her presentation. But thank you all for joining. We're going to actually stop the recording, and then 